right face. Forward march. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Town of Lexington, the Select Board, Town Manager Jim Malloy, the Economic Development Office, Department of Public Facilities, Visitor Center staff, and Tourism Committee, we are very pleased to welcome you to the Lexington Visitor Center ribbon cutting ceremony. After years of planning, construction, and a worldwide pandemic, we are so grateful to finally welcome you to this beautiful new building in the heart of historic Lexington Center. The Lexington Visitor Center is so much more than just a place to get directions or use the restroom. It introduces tens of thousands of visitors from around the world annually to this, the birthplace of American liberty. It never ceases to amaze me how excited people are to be here and to learn about the Battle of Lexington and the founding of our country. It has truly been an honor over the past few years to host visitors from all 50 states, as well as international visitors, to share the events that happened on this very spot on April 19, 1775. Many come here and tell me they had a relative who fought in the battle on that fateful spring day. Many are returning for their second or even third visit. Still others are introducing their grandchildren to our storied history for the very first time. After the uncertainty of 2020, we are pleased to report that chartered bus tours return by the dozens this month, and thousands of people have taken advantage of our Battle Green and Liberty Ride tours this season. It is truly great to be back. We are so grateful to everyone who has helped make this building possible. With your support, we hope to continue to introduce additional programming and serve the public in a very meaningful way. We have a great list of speakers today. In addition to our speakers, we would like to recognize State Senator Cindy Friedman, the Permanent Building Committee, and Concord Town Manager Stephen Crane. Now, I would like to introduce our first speaker. From the Lexington Tourism Committee, our first speaker will be Chair Don McKenna. What a glorious morning for Lexington, the Commonwealth, and all who have joined us for the celebration. <clears throat> like those ordinary people who stood united for common cause on April 19, 1775, the Tourism Committee understood what was at stake when they proposed to replace the half-century-old visitor center 10 years ago and the battle that lay ahead. The strength of Lexington continues to be the willingness of Lexingtonians to give unselfishly of their time and talents for the betterment of the community and beyond. While we did not win all the skirmishes along the way, it was because of the collective sacrifices of so many that the building you see today is a proud reflection of our continuous drive for excellence. Our efforts began with a simple, simple idea that Lexington had a duty to showcase its history to visitors from around the world. These visitors who come here to see family, for education, to experience the visual and performing arts, and of course for the historic Battle Green, created a unique opportunity to reimagine economic development in our town. The Tourism Committee believed that the key to doing so 
was a building, a 21st century visitor center in the same location as the original center. In recent decades, the railroad had become an active Minuteman commuter bikeway on one side, with the Battle Green and Buckman Tavern that played prominent roles in the formation of our country along Massachusetts Avenue. The building design and services offered would need to accommodate all users. In order to make this dream a reality, we had to look at what the visitor-based economy meant in Lexington. A wise colleague said to me, the numbers don't lie. From then forward, every time we discussed the project, we touted facts like tourism is the third largest industry in the state and the fifth largest industry in Lexington. Additionally, over the last decade, we more than tripled our annual and hotel and meals tax income. And most importantly, of the over one million people who visit the Minuteman National Park nearby annually, 120,000 walk through the visitor center doors each year. That mantra at least had our leaders listening. I note that while these statistics were pre-pandemic, visitors, visitation and spending is once again rising as Katie articulated. Despite the potential benefits, it was difficult to convince the building to support, to, uh, difficult to convince the community to support a building that would ultimately cost $5.1 million. However, as is always the case in Lexington, our leaders came up with innovative ways to help mitigate the costs for taxpayers. The first idea was to ask the Commonwealth to partner with us. Thanks to the efforts of Lexington's legislators, the town secured direct state funding through the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. Next, it was the Lexington Lions Club's 10-year funding commitment that guaranteed that our fundraising efforts would not end once the shovel went in the ground. After that, generous gifts and grants began to come in from near and far, including a substantial Massachusetts Cultural Facilities grant. Armed with state and private support and a continued commitment to raise one-fifth of the project costs, the construction was finally given the green light. The building that stands before you is fully accessible for all abilities. It includes a contemplative room to honor the United States ships named Lexington and the sacrifices of those who served on those ships. It has informative exhibits, maps, and self-serve options that allow visitors to explore all Lexington has to offer, discover Lexington's accomplishment in the centuries following 1775, while also previewing other communities in the state that people can visit. The front room features the diorama of the Battle of Lexington in a space suitable to allow all who come through our doors to engage in learning the story of the birthplace of American liberty. The centerpiece of the building is the desk that welcomes visitors no matter what door they enter. And while the building itself provides the opportunities, it is the interactions with our fantastic visitor center advisors and guide that make the experience unforgettable. There are so many people who should be thanked, but that would take way too long. Instead, know that the Tourism Committee will forever be grateful to each one of you who brought our collective vision to life. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, next, we would like to introduce Doug Lucenti, Vice Chair of the Lexington Select Board and Tourism Committee Liaison. Doug. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to participate in this ribbon cutting and celebration of our beautiful new visitor center and on behalf of my select board colleagues, who are all here today, our chair, Jill Hay, if maybe they could raise their hands so everyone knows who they are, our, uh, Joe Pato, Susie Barry, and Mark Sandine. It's finally nice to be together. This is the first time in 18 months the five of us have actually been within uh, uh, a few yards of each other, uh, it's, which is great. And so I speak for the entire select board 
when I say that we are delighted to finally see this project come to completion. Uh, we have finally had this opportunity to be together in person and to enjoy this beautiful day. We really lucked out today. Like all municipal projects, this one had a long and detailed process. But unlike other municipal projects, such as a school or a fire station, this project did not have a built-in constituency or built-in advocacy group of users because the people who mainly are served by the visitor center don't actually live here. Uh, and despite lacking a user group, this project kept moving forward because of the dedication of several people who really believed in the importance of replacing the outdated building. I want to thank the Tourism Committee and especially our, the Chair, Don McKenna, for her persistence in shepherding this project from the beginning until this ribbon cutting now. I also want to reiterate our thanks to all the generous donors who helped make this a reality and most importantly, the town meeting members and ultimately the taxpayers for supporting the initiative and funding this project. Also on behalf of the Select Board, I want to thank our Economic Development Office, past and present, and the Visitor Center staff and Katie, as well as our Public Facilities Director, Mike Cronin, and the DPF staff for getting this project completed. This is an important building for many, many reasons. It's more than just a welcome mat for those that visit the birthplace of American Liberty. This building represents an obligation that we have as stewards of this special town. The foundation of our democracy was built across the street on 246 years ago. And we need to share that story with the rest of the country and the rest of the world. I recently read an article in John's, uh, excuse me, in the Atlantic Magazine written by Ronald Daniels who's the president of Johns Hopkins University and the author of a forthcoming book titled Univer What o Universities Owe Democracy. In the book, he makes a compelling case for teaching democracy and civics to all college students, regardless of their chosen major. And he argues that a great civics education leads to great participation in the democracy. He further states that education for democracy can take many forms, and there is a great value no matter what its form. This building, the Lexington Visitor Center, is our form. It's our way to help educate visitors on the role that the people of Lexington played in the creation of our democracy. I'm also wearing a different hat this morning. I'm proudly a member of the Lexington Lions Club for the past 25 years. And I'm being joined this morning by several of my fellow Lions members who are out there in the audience. We are so happy to be able to contribute to this project. And as Don mentioned, we pledged $50,000 over a 10-year period from the proceeds of our 4th of July Carnival. But most importantly, our connection to this building is the USS Lexington Memorial. The memorial's five granite markers, which are on the other side of the building, are dedicated to the memory of those who served aboard the ships named Lexington. And for the past 33 years, the Lions Club has rededicated the memorials every Patriot's Day. The area inside the visitor center dedicated to the USS Lexington ships helps keep this memorial alive and keep and continue to honor the service of those who served on the ships. Looking ahead, I personally cannot wait for the 250th celebration in 2025. At this point, I think we've had about four years of compromised Patriots days between rainy weather and the pandemic. So we are bound to have some good weather by then, I hope. And I'm so glad to see this project done so that everybody can enjoy Lexington's history when we celebrate it. Thanks again for your support of this project. At this time, I'd like to introduce Lexington's town manager, Jim Malloy. Jim? So I'll be somewhat brief. Public buildings are a reflection of a community's values. The building that used to stand here, it's too bad that we couldn't have them side by side so you could visit one and then visit the other. The building that was here was dark. It was undersized. 
and it was overcrowded. And it wasn't really designed for uh, a, a visitor center of today. This building, when you go inside, it's light, it's airy, it's accessible, and it's informative. It has a lot of information in it. And we have a wonderful staff there that has a really good building to work in right now. The, um, what, I, what I wanna really do is, I, wanna, I do wanna take a second, I know that uh, Don McKenna said she, it would take too long to thank people, but I'm gonna thank people pretty quickly. And I will, we'll start with the uh, town meeting members because without town meetings vote, we wouldn't have been able to have done this project. But also the tourism committee, as um, Doug Lucente said, was uh, integral in really sort of shepherding it and being the, the force to get this to move forward. But there's also other people who do a lot of work behind the scenes that, that should be recognized. I think that the um, Permanent Building Committee should be recognized for their diligence and hard work on it. And I think that uh, Mike Cronin, our Director of Public Facilities, and his entire staff, who sweated every detail, and I mean every little detail on this building, um, need to be recognized. I think our economic development staff who work in this building need to be recognized because you can build a building, but it's a thing. The people who work in that building uh, reflect to the community, to the visitors that come in here every single day that they're at work. So it's very important that they get recognized. And then also the other people who aren't even in the com community, uh, Don Mills, the architect for the project, really did a wonderful job. And there's some detail on here with the copper and everything that really needs to be considered when you think about uh, the design of the building. And then also L.D. Russo, the contractor who actually built the building, um, should be recognized because they also did a really quality job. And hopefully this will be a building that the community can be proud of for the next 50 years. The last group that also has to be um, recognized is our finance department, who without them, none of this would have happened. Somebody has to make sure that the bills are being paid, that prevailing wage and all the other purchasing laws are being met. And so there's a lot of people who uh, deserve credit for this building to be here. But you know, for the next 50 years, hopefully we'll have a great building to enjoy. So thank you, and we had a wonderful day too. I don't know who ordered that, but it's a wonderful day. Thank you. Next, we'd like to introduce Mich Michelle Chicolo, State Representative. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day. I am so overjoyed to be here with you all to celebrate this brand new building and how spectacular it is for our community. It gives me chills, even though it's a warm day, to think what we have done together as a community coming together to build this facility. It couldn't have happened without all of you, very specifically, as so many of the prior speakers have said, this community, when it does something, it comes together to do it in a grand way and do it well. I want to give a nod to my predecessor, Jay Kaufman, who is here in the audience as well, because I know he helped shepherd this through for many years. And I just want to reflect on um, what it takes to do something like this. In particular, Don McKenna and her perseverance on this. I have vivid memories when I was on the board of the debates and the conversation. And I was proud to strategize with her about how we would convince the community that this expenditure was worth it to lend my voice to the naysayers and put my shoulder into it. But it really takes a, a group like the Tourism Committee, the Center Committee, um, and all of our town meeting members to decide that we want to do something this grand and this wonderful. And because this is the building that helps us um, celebrate our history, it is so important, as previous speakers have said, that we recognize Lexington's role in the birthplace of America. And that is why this is just such a tremendous day. So I bring you a citation from the legislature, the Commonwealth of Mass. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Lexington in recognition of the grand opening of the new visitor center. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given the seventh day of October, 2021, from the State House signed by Speaker Ronald Mariano and myself. So congratulations to the town of Lexington. I will give this to our chair, Jill. And um, let's enjoy this day to be together.
State Senator Mike Barrett will now come up and say a few words. Thank you all for being here. And special thanks to Don McKenna, who's been the driver for this project from the very beginning and who brought us all together. And to, again, I want to join Michelle in hailing Representative Jay Kaufman, who was the dean of the Lexington delegation at the time that we secured the initial state funding and who deserves a great deal of thanks from us now. As it happens, uh, we're standing right in the middle of one of my favorite lunch spots. I like to buy a sandwich and sit on one of the benches under that tree right there. People come walking by off and off the buses. I ask them where they're visiting from, and they say the South or the Midwest. Lots of folks from out of state. And here in our hometown, they find an American narrative that is compelling for them that offers hope and inspires pride. And yet we have to acknowledge, I think, that this ribbon cutting also comes at a difficult time for the country. The United States has been going through a bit of a rough patch. Many good people in Lexington and other communities have the anguished fear that Americans no longer share a set of common values. The US Senate is evenly and deeply divided. The US House, pretty much the same. A couple of months ago, a New York Times columnist mourned, and I quote, the collapse of trust, the rise of animosity between red places and blue places. He wrote, part of the blame goes to those conservatives who try to whitewash history. But part goes to those progressives who tell such a negative version of history that it undermines patriotism. Now, I'm going to reflect my own biases here. I think the writer is spot on with respect to those certain conservatives. But I also accept the kernel of truth in his observation about certain progressives. If I can channel the progressive mindset for a moment, I'd say it's normal to construct an idealized view of the object of our affections. And this includes the nation of which we're part. Then something profoundly unsettling happens, like the knee to George Floyd's neck. And you have to acknowledge to yourself once again the slavery, as well as the slaughter of Native Americans, are the country's original sins. But then you think back to Lexington and Concord and the values to which the center is dedicated. The story of the United States is told here from its inception. The War of Independence, which begat the Declaration of Independence. And you're reminded that America, as a collection of ideals, occupies the proper place in our reverence despite the terrible moments when we Americans, as a collection of human beings, have sold our country short. Given the lofty principles for which our forebears fought on the very ground on which we stand this morning, the bar for us today, as today's Americans, is set very high. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is what we pledge allegiance to. What a beautiful image. It remains beautiful even when we fail to live up to it. The country and its people were idealistic from the very beginning, right from the beginning here in Lexington, but imperfect from the beginning as well. The concept has always been right. The implementation has left a lot to be desired. It is in this sense that the Lexington Visitor Center offers a unifying experience in a polarizing time. Its management and staff will, I hope, find ways to remind everyone who steps through the doors of both the nobility of our goals and the occasional fragility of our execution. Already at the Buckman Tavern next door, in an exhibition on the under-acknowledged contributions of Lexington women, the town has gently but firmly reminded us that for decades and even centuries, the reality of equal opportunity remains just ahead of us, out of reach, at least for now. And yet, we persist. Liberty and justice for all is the American dream that we choose to be driven by. We fall short of our best behavior time and time again, and we pick ourselves up and press on. 
because the United States, as we know, is not a finished thing. We're still pondering the model, still inventing ourselves as one true nation. The challenge for the visitor center, and I might add for people in government like me, is to communicate an appreciation of American history set against the benchmark of American aspiration. With full appreciation for the complexity of that job, let's carry on. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Barrett. Um, in a moment, we're going to have some music from our fife and drum. Uh, but first, I would also like to acknowledge um, members of the Lexington Minutemen and His Majesty's 10th Regiment who have attended today's ceremony. And now I'll turn you over to the fife and drum.
Thank you, and I'd just like to recognize our Fifers. We have Dale Wilson, Amelia Setembre, and Eileen Rogers. And Dale and Amelia are also guides of ours. <laughs> we are very excited to have Keiko Oral, Executive Director of the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism here um, to speak to you now. Thank you. What a glorious morning for America. What a glorious morning to be here in Lexington. I was noticing the seal, and it is a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you so much for this uh, chance to join you. For generations, Lexingtonians have admirably welcomed visitors from across the nation and around the world. Tour buses, bicyclists, families and friends, teachers and students, Historians and scholars, politicians, and foreign students have journeyed to this hallowed place, this birthplace of American liberty. You have welcomed us all. Visitors may initially come to Lexington for a taste of American history, but they stay and return for many other reasons. Your cultural institutions, a sense of community, your bustling main streets and charming retail stores, your wonderful cuisine and hospitality, and your treasured open space and natural beauty. Today's ribbon cutting is a welcome addition to our visitor industry in more ways than one. It will not only provide visitors with a welcoming, comfortable experience, but it will also contribute directly to the economic vitality of the town of Lexington and the entire Merrimack Valley region. I know that there are many communities that are represented here today. From a tourism pr perspective, Mott's mission, the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism, is certainly to promote Massachusetts as a de destination for both domestic and international travelers. But equally important, our mission is to contribute to the Commonwealth's economy. Lexington shows how tourism stimulates growth. I especially appreciate the symmetry of having um, the 1965 Visitor Center as a lead up to this uh, 250th Bicentennial and now this new Visitor Center opening as a lead up to the 250th anniversary of the Battle of Lexington, which we'll celebrate in 2025. Amazing timing, Don, um, and to the Tourism Committee. Uh, in government, we talk a lot about partnerships and collaboration and indeed, we are proud of some recent partnerships with our office. Funded by Travel and Tourism Recovery Grants, Lexington and Concord, two historic towns, one memorable visit, was a joint marketing effort with both towns, along with the Greater Merrimack Valley CVB, to invite tourists to check out both towns and the surrounding area. The campaign has increased visitors, tours taken, merchandise sold, with retailers reporting increased foot tra traffic and sales. That's what this is all about. We are thrilled to be with you today. We're thrilled to be with you as we celebrate this next chapter and showcase the amazing opportunities here in Lexington. Thank you. Our final speaker of the morning, we are very pleased to introduce Massachusetts Housing and Economic Development Secretary and Lexington resident and neighbor, Mike Keneally. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful day in Lexington. Can I first, I want to acknowledge uh, Keiko and all the great work she's done. Where's Keiko? Um, Being head of travel and tourism during a pandemic is less than ideal, right? But she's done an amazing job. So many thanks to Keiko for her great work. Um, I'm I guess I'm batting eighth in this lineup. A lot of great things have been said already. L let me offer three, three observations. First, it is just great to be back out again. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I would travel the state all the time. I'm back on the road now. 
I literally have been from Williamstown to Provincetown in the last two weeks. Let me tell you, we, we are coming out of this thing. And every day for me in this job is a reminder of the strength and the vitality and the diversity of our economy and our citizens and our community. So there, there's reason for optimism. And my travels around the state have been terrific. We've did 24 downtowns to visit our small businesses over the summer. I'm on the road now doing tours of affordable housing. So we're getting back out there again. And it's wonderful to see. Um, I love all 351 of our cities and towns. However, <laughs> I only live in one of them. And I do take uh, special pride in, uh, in living here in the birthplace of American liberty and raising my family here. Uh, all because I met this girl in business school who was from Lexington who insisted we live here, so. <laughs> Never thought I'd own a hotel, but you know, <laughs> things happen. So first of all, it's just, just wonderful to see everybody, wonderful to be back out there and, and great to be home. Um, secondly, I, I do a lot of these events around the state, and at each one of these events, you get something like this, okay? And I don't know if folks read this. I always read these because when you think about who's on the page here, you've got state government, local government, you know, town meeting, private philanthropy, town management, you know, the citizens. It really just speaks to how we get things done around here. And we are a state that is, I think, naturally collaborative. And yes, projects take a long time, and every project needs a champion, Don, who's gonna see this through, right? And you know, and I, I love these events because you hear the stories about the projects. I happen to know this story better than some other stories around the state, but it's wonderful to see. You learn about how we get things done around here. And it always takes a little longer than you thought. It's always a little more complicated. It always costs a little more, bit more money. But each one of these required, someone had to have the idea. All right, and the creativity and the tenacity and the willingness to work together to get it done. And so, yes, this is a, a complicated recipe for getting things done. What comes out the other end is this, right? Really wonderful projects that the community embraces. So that is always wonderful to see. Uh, the third and final point I'll leave you with is that uh, from the governor on down, our team knows how important travel and tourism is to Massachusetts. I'm reminded often sometimes at home, that tourism is the third largest part of our economy. And we know it's critically important. And this has been, I mean, okay, to say the least, it's been an enormously challenging time for our main street businesses, our tourist destinations, the things that make up the lifeblood of our economy in our downtowns, right? And, and Keiko mentioned some of the programs we've had. We've, we've thrown a lot of resources at this. We're funding tourism marketing at record levels. We've had tourism and travel recovery grants and, and capital grants to our tourist destinations. We're about to get $16 million more from the federal government for tourism. Th there's a lot we've thrown at this because it's really, really important. And the reason I did 24 downtown tour this summer is to really get into our main streets and our communities and see what's going on and see what they need. You know, we did this great campaign over the spring and summer called the My Local Campaign, which continues today. And the idea behind that one was to get people to really think about where they're spending their money, okay? And if you wanna understand the economic damage of the pandemic, go look on Main Street. We need people back in our main streets, thinking about our, our retailers, our restaurants, our tourist destinations. So we're gonna keep at this. And I hope we'll have more money to spend on this because the state was fortunate to get about $5 billion from the American Rescue Plan Act. And the governor has made a proposal on how to spend $2.9 billion of that. And it includes things like $350 million for downtown revitalization and $100 million for tourism and cultural facilities. And so we look forward to working with our colleagues in the legislature to get that one done because it's really, really important. Again, it makes up the fabric of who we are and it will help drive a robust economic recovery for all of us. So thank you all, it is great to be here. It's a great day for Lexington. It's a great day for Massachusetts, thank you.